Libya's deputy ambassador to the United Nations says the work in Libya is just beginning, and that work starts with finding Muammar Gaddafi. Up to the minutes, Frank Uciardo reports. As rebel forces in Libya continue to solidify their grip in Tripoli, the man they are hunting, Colonel Muammar Gaddafi, remains elusive and, according to Libya's deputy UN ambassador, more dangerous than before. Uh, he is uh, insane. This is the conviction of the Libyan people, and we think uh, he has uh, he has the intention uh, that as soon as he feels that he will is going to lose uh, power, he will try uh, his best to kill as uh, many people uh, as many Libyan people as possible and to destroy uh, as much of the country as possible. I call on Conor Gaddafi's forces to cease violence immediately and make way for a smooth transition. But it may be too late for a smooth transition and for Gaddafi to take advantage of previous offers for political asylum in another country. No, it is gone off the table. I don't think, I think it is a, 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 it is a mistake if now when the uh, uh, freedom fighters are controlling Tripoli, uh, we try to give him uh, any concessions. This is, it will be a, a political uh, mistake. I don't think any uh, Libyan leader can make it. Ambassador, a lot of people are wondering whether or not Gaddafi will be taken alive. Do you want him to be brought to justice? I expect him to be taken alive. I think he is staying somewhere hiding in Tripoli, and uh, certainly uh, he will be captured or uh, killed uh, uh, in, in the coming hours. Ambassador Debashi says the rebels' startling surge into Tripoli was met by little resistance because even those troops loyal to Gaddafi began to realize that it was not a civil war, but a war against their own people. It is a regime against his people. Uh, uh, the regime tried to convince the international community that it is a civil war and it is a tribal uh, problem. But uh, in fact, it is, it is the Libyan people against the dictatorship of Colonel Gaddafi. And many of them just uh, left their arms and uh, many of them uh, took off their uh, uniforms and uh, went home. And as regime change appears imminent in Libya, the rest of the Arab world is watching Syria to see if the end game is near for President Assad. Do you think this sort of scenario with Colonel Gaddafi sends a message to President Assad in Syria? I think he, he has the conv uh, con conviction that it is the same scenario. What happened in Libya is the same uh, is going to happen uh, somehow in Syria. And that's why he is following the steps of Gaddafi in defending his regime. He used uh, snipers, he used uh, heavy armies, including tanks against his, uh, his people. And uh, certainly uh, when he uh, sees Gaddafi falling, I think that's uh, a clear indication, uh, indication that he's going to, f going to fall also. So we, we expect him to uh, review uh, the situation and try to uh, maybe uh, do something uh, about the situation in Syria, maybe to give up uh, power. Libya's deputy UN ambassador says they will probably need assistance from the United Nations in monitoring elections and rebuilding infrastructure, but he does not believe they will need NATO or UN troops to stabilize the country. Plans for a transitional government in Libya are already in the works. And, and Frank, you sat down with the ambassador while his country is going through all of these historical and extraordinary changes. What was he like? Well, he, he was jubilant. He was confident that better days are ahead for Libya. But there were some tense moments for him personally because he had to sneak his own daughter out of the country because he feeled Colonel Gaddafi's wrath and revenge. Wow. Hearing many incredible stories. Frank Uciardo with that report this morning. Frank, thank you so much. You're welcome.